Some recent questions that I received from folks looking to buy a house. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Realty Group. So let's just jump right in. So the first question that I often hear is, you know, what, are the, what is the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification? This is a great question. And pre-qualification is essentially that rubber stamp where a mortgage banker is just, uh, after having a very quick conversation where you tell them how much money you make and you know what your assets are, as well as what you're planning on doing with the down payment, they say, great, here's a pre-qualification, no real uh, verification in any way, shape or form, go out, happy hunting. Versus a pre-approval, it really goes in and it's the mortgage banker actually digging a little bit deeper and really doing some work. And what I mean by that is they're going to have that same conversation in regards to assets, how much you make, right, what's your down payment, but they're also going to ask for proof like taxes, pay stubs, mortgage, or, uh, excuse me, bank statements, right? Those things allow the mortgage banker to go a step further and, and really essentially you know, add some certainty that, that ultimately that home buyer has a very high likelihood of actually closing on the property. Why is this so important? Well, think of it this way. If you're a seller and you happen to have a multiple offer situation with two buyers, one with a pre-qualification and one with the pre-approval, they're ultimately going to lean towards that buyer that has a pre-approval because it offers that seller more certainty that the house is actually going to close. So another question that we hear, and it's a great one, is what type of closing costs should I expect? And are there any hidden fees? Well, this varies state by state. In the state of Massachusetts, we ultimately estimate about 1.5% of the purchase price for your closing costs. This can vary and it can increase, especially if a home buyer is looking to pay points, which is ultimately paying down their mortgage. Now today, with interest rates so low, very rarely do we ever see anybody paying down points, but it is something that is available to folks. So what type of closing costs can we kind of expect, right? Well, closing costs are these and not really limited to these. You can have other ones, but essentially it's, it's uh, lender fees, title fees, which include title insurance as well as the title exam fee, um, as well as recording fees that you, know, you have to pay the state in order to record the de deed, and maybe any attorney fees as well as the insurance that you're gonna get in order to ultimately insure the house that you're gonna buy. Now the closing costs are ultimately gonna be affected by when you purchase the property as well. A great example is if you close on a property at the end of the month, your closing costs are actually going to be less versus if you close in the beginning of the month due to prepaid interest up front. Now, the great news is, is that you don't pay a separate lending fee or commission to your mortgage banker, and you shouldn't be worried about any hidden fees, right? The bank is required by law to provide you what is called a loan estimate when you actually apply for a loan. A loan estimate includes estimated costs for the mortgage loan and will actually provide a borrower with basic information in order for them to help compare offers from different banks. Now here's one of the best parts about it is that by law, it states that a bank cannot charge a home buyer more than 10% more than what is on that loan estimate when they apply for that loan. What does this do? Well, it does a couple things. It essentially makes sure that when you get to the closing table and it's ultimately too late, that you're not gonna be shocked with any huge surprises in regards to what the lender all of a sudden is charging you, right? And it also offers a lot of transparency between the buyer and the bank. And you know, it's just a really great consumer protection that, that, the, you know, that they've put in place. So another question that we hear is, can the seller actually help pay for my closing costs? Another amazing question. And the answer to this is yes. It's called closing cost assistance, and this should really be discussed at the beginning of the offer process versus the end because, you know, ultimately, you know, closing costs can really change the makeup of, of an offer and, and essentially a deal. So a seller can pay up to 3% of a buyer's closing cost, but you need to be careful. For example, if you have a $300,000 house and you were a buyer and you asked for $15,000 in closing costs and your closing costs were only four grand, well, believe it or not, $15,000 minus four grand is 11 grand. That $11,000 actually reverts back to the seller because a bank isn't going to allow you to take that $11,000 and put it towards your down payment or, or to do improvements on a property. And again, this is one of the biggest reasons why this is something that we need to talk about up front in regards to what are your real estate goals and ultimately how can we accomplish that. Another great question we hear is, hey, my lease is up next month. How long does it actually take on, to close on this house? Well, again, this, this will vary state by state. In the state of Massachusetts, if you're getting a loan, on average, you know, it probably takes the quickest you can do it is somewhere in the ballpark of 30 to 35 days. 30 days is really pushing it and ultimately a seamless process where there have been no speed pumps and ultimately the buyer has gotten them everything on time. 
Generally speaking, the average closing time in the state of Massachusetts is about 45 days. At the Chubb Realty Group, our philosophy is to make moving easier. We understand that the mortgage process, it can be a little confusing and it can be uh, just a long maze and, and we're here to walk you through that, right? If you have any questions about this or anything else, feel free to give us a call. The best number to reach us at is 617-480-2600 or by email at jeff at boston2.com. Thanks for watching. We look forward to hearing from you and hope you're having a great day.